The irony is too much. This channel is called Windows Down. My passenger side window won't even roll down. The G35 and the 350Z window motors are known to fail, and I use these a lot. The passenger side motor started acting up when I'd hit the auto up function, and it would go all the way to the top and then automatically come down halfway on its own. After a trip to Vegas where it was 118 degrees outside, it just stopped working altogether. I could only get it to go up or down if I hit on the door or if I closed the door while I was holding the switch. A replacement motor is about 200 to 300 bucks and you can get them at the auto parts store. But changing the window motor isn't too hard after you've done it once or twice. So I'm actually gonna try a cheap $40 motor off of Amazon and we'll see how it holds up. I'll keep y'all posted in the comments if and when this thing goes out. If you have a lot of patience, apparently you can actually repair these things. You can open the motor up and replace what's called the brushes, which you can get online for a couple bucks, and then solder them back on and reassemble it. it. Takes a lot of patience, it looks like, so I'll probably end up just swapping the whole part out. But first, let's get this broken motor out. First, we have to get the trim panel off. There's three hidden screws to remove, one by the door handle, and then two underneath the aluminum door grip that should pop off. Now the door panel is just held in by plastic clips. I worked a corner of the door panel up and then started pulling outwards. Once a few clips are loose, work around the edge pulling straight out. Sometimes these clips will break. If you're worried about that, you can order some replacement clips online for pretty cheap. There's a connector to the door light, and then there's two cables for opening and locking the door that you'll have to pop out. Then pop the door switch assembly through the front so you can disconnect the wiring harness. Looks like my locking solenoid has been replaced. There's some zip ties holding it in. And this wire here going to it doesn't have a clamp or anything. And it's clearly just electrical tape together. So I just snipped it. Later on, I'll put some spade connectors on these wires. That should be everything to fully take the door panel off. It's best to have the window lowered if you can, or have someone hold the window so it doesn't fall once we take the motor out. Now we remove all of these black 10 millimeter bolts going around the outside. These bolts hold the door panel to the door itself. The glass and window regulator assembly are still connected to this black door panel. Next, we'll remove two zinc bolts and two zinc plated nuts. These four hold the window regulator assembly to the door panel. These last three zinc bolts in the middle hold the motor itself to the door panel. Once we remove these, we can start to take the whole panel off. The seal on mine was baked on there pretty good, so I had to pry along the edge to release it. Once you can take a peek behind the panel, remove the clips holding the wiring harness, then push through the rubber grommet. This clip holds the window cable. Hold it on the other side if you don't want it to drop. Finally, the motor. The three screws holding it in were super tight for me. I tried as hard as I could not to strip the Phillips head, but I could still feel it sliding. A little PB blaster and some small vice grips helped me get those puppies off. Once all three are out, the motor should slide out from the square drive. So, I tried to fix this damn motor, but it was not a good use of time. I desoldered the old brushes, I soldered on new ones, but then when I went to reassemble it, I found out that the worm shaft, yeah, that's what it's actually called, would not fit back in all the way. And because of that, when you try to assemble the damn thing, this doesn't quite fit. Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! I don't know what it is. Maybe there's something jammed in there. I tried looking, but I couldn't quite figure it out. Let me know in the comments if anybody's seen this. I tried everything I could think of. I'll link a video down below that helped me swap the motor brushes if you dare try this method. This Amazon motor isn't OEM, but we'll see how it holds up. To install it, just line up the square drive, rotate it if you need to, and then tighten the screws. Then grab the panel, feed the wire through, and then seat the rubber grommet. Here I'm positioning the motor with my left hand just to get the thread started for each of the three bolts that hold the motor to the panel.
Before you go any further, it's a good time to put this white clip into the back of the panel. The next bit's a little tricky. We need to get the bolts from the window regulator to poke through the panel so we can put these nuts on. Sometimes it will line up right away. Other times you'll actually have to lift the regulator assembly upwards and then towards you. That'll get the bolts more exposed. This assembly is supporting the weight of the window, so it will be a little heavier than you might expect. Just do it carefully and get those bolts a little closer to the inside of the car. When putting the panel on, just focus on getting the two bolts to come through those holes and then get the nuts on hand tight. The top two zinc bolts that also go into the regulator assembly are similar. Make sure the threads are lined up before you even start to insert the bolts. Here I'm actually using my left fingers to move the window so the threads will line up. On the back of the door panel are two metal alignment pins that you can see here. You should be able to move the door panel now where these pins will go into place and it'll be flush with the door. Before you start tightening more bolts, make sure you did not leave the door cables behind like this guy. The glass and the window regulator are all attached to this panel now. So if the panel needs to be lifted into place, it'll be a little heavy. That's the hard part done. Then hand tighten all of the black 10 millimeter bolts on the outside. Then connect up the motor wiring and the door switch for a quick test. It's alive. Now we need to do the reset procedure so the motor knows where the top and the bottom positions are. Behind this sticker here is the actual reset button. When doing the reset procedure, always do the manual roll up and roll down. Don't use the auto function. With the door open, roll the window all the way up manually. Then climb into the car, making sure none of the wires get crushed by the door. And close the door. There's the reset button. Press and hold the reset button. Roll the window down manually. Let off the switch. Let off the reset button. Now go up all the way. Now just go back and tighten all the bolts you only left hand tight. Mount the wiring harness to the door. Plug your connectors and cables into the door panel. And when you put the door panel on, remember to slide it on from above and let it hang off the top of the door. Push along the edges to snap the clips into place. Then the final three screws and the covers, and then you're done. That's it, and now you got working windows. If you guys like the content, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Look for more to come. Bye, y'all.